It's no secret that New York City is a difficult place to live. Daily tasks, things that wouldn't be a big deal elsewhere, like doing your laundry or getting groceries, just seem to take a little more effort here. The last thing you want is to go home to an apartment that is equally as uncomfortable or difficult as just daily city life. I've been in New York about 12 years now, and in my time here, I have lived in apartments where the bathroom ceiling has collapsed, where I didn't have heat in the winter, so it was literally freezing inside, and of course, places that were infested with mice and roaches, and worst of all, bed bugs. When I say infested, I mean every time I open my closet door, I expect to see a dead mouse on the trap, which is so sad, so sad. When I say infested, I mean I don't eat in my kitchen anymore because I expect there to be roaches in all of my groceries. In the cabinet, I expect to see roaches in the refrigerator. I expect to see roaches crawling around the door frame when I go into my bedroom. You don't have to live that way. You don't need to move into a place and be surprised in that way. There are resources available to you to help you vet your potential apartment. And I am here to share them with you because had someone shared them with me before my time of need, before I was in crisis, I could have avoided some hellish situations. And you know, I really don't want you or anyone else to go through what I went through, ever, ever, ever. I want you to be comfortable and happy. So I'm here to share those resources with you. Here they are. So the first one is the New York City Housing, the New York City Housing Preservation and Development website. Super easy. This site would have saved me so much, so, so many tears, so many tears. Yeah, this website's great. So all you have to do is scroll to the bottom of the page. You click find building data enter the address of the place you're interested in, and then click complaint history on the left side of the screen, and you'll see all of the recent complaints filed against the building. For example, before moving into my current apartment, I was, you know, doing my apartment search, and I found this one place that looked really great. It's like, cool, let's check it out. But I am no fool. So before I even went to go see that apartment, I went to this HPD website, entered that address. And when I got to the complaint history, buddy, let me tell you, not good, not pretty. So like, if you're looking at apartment 409 and you see that apartment 509 has leaking sewage, you might be a little hesitant. Where's that sewage leaking? Gravity says down, my friends. Or if apartment 509 has roaches and you're looking at 508, very likely you have roaches. Is that what you want? No, probably not. One or two complaints, maybe something small, like maybe a noise complaint. You might want to take that risk. Maybe it's just like a kind of Christophery person who doesn't tolerate any noise. I realize Christochity isn't a real world word, but um, me and my friends used to say it in co college to uh, describe tangent. Um, a curmudgeon who doesn't like any noise or music. Yeah, one or two complaints, you might want to risk it, but a whole page or multiple pages of complaints like this place, bruh, don't do it. Do not do it. Not worth it. Don't care how much you're paying in rent or how little you're paying in rent. You know, it's bad news, bad news bears. Okay, anyway, uh, yeah, very useful site, use that. Next one, number two the public advocates list of worst landlords. 
Every year, the public advocate for the city publishes a list of the 100 worst landlords in the city. And I didn't know this existed until I was living in a building where the landlord was on the list. Like the HPD website, really helpful. Just go on the site, enter the name of the landlord, or you know, you can scroll through the list or do a little command F find that's that's fine right command f search and type in the name of the landlord see if they're on there if they're on there you probably don't want to live there why because these are the type of landlords who will leave you on red when you have no heat in the winter just don't do it if you can um on that site you can browse by map view which is sad because you will see to no one's surprise that most of the bad landlords live in the neighborhoods where, or don't, they probably don't live in the neighborhoods. Most of the bad landlords are managing properties where the people of color live and where poor people live, which is a sad reality of our nation. And I won't go on a rant about capitalism or greed. Next one, number three. This is pretty intuitive, pretty simple but maybe it's intimidating for some people just ask go if you're at the building to check out the unit ask people who already live there if they like living there or if they have problems uh, new yorkers are not shy to talk about to complain um, we say good things to, i i don't i won't we myself i I won't weed myself. Um, I wasn't born here, so I won't assume the title of New Yorker, but I will say people who live in New York are not afraid to tell you the truth on most, on most accounts. Um, so just ask people in the building. They will likely really love to tell you what it's like to live there. Another easy thing to do, read reviews. If you're looking at a luxury building or a bigger, a, a building with many, many units, it's likely that someone's writing reviews about the building on Google, Yelp, some site like this. And you can just go on and see if people are responsive. When I say writing reviews, I really mean like if there are problems, people are complaining. People are airing their grievances publicly, trying to get help from someone who's being unresponsive. And lastly, this is not a resource. This is just kind of a, a tip, tip for me. Um, don't live on top of empty commercial space, if you can. I know the pandemic has caused a lot of storefronts to close. So unfortunately, there's a lot of um, empty commercial space in the city now. But what happens when the first floor of a building is not really being maintained, it can cause problems with heat and water on the floors above, even, I assume, pests. So just don't do it. Be careful. Don't do that if you can. Uh, so yeah, those are the resources, the ones I've used in the past. I wish I knew about them before I was in crisis. I would have saved myself many instances of being the crying girl on the phone on the sidewalk. I don't, I don't want that for you unless they're tears of joy. So I hope the resources come in handy. I hope your apartment search goes swimmingly and you find somewhere that you wanna live for many, many years unless you decide that you want to leave New York and move to a place with grass and sunshine, which is also, and less noise all the time, which is understandable. But until then, be at peace.